Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology and also with Carleton University Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. Today I'm going to talk all about the jet streams. So this is uh, Earth Null School. If you just Google it and you click on Earth, you can set up all the parameters that you want. So I'm looking at height 250 millibar that's that's the, where the the altitude the jets fly at i'm looking at the wind the air okay um if i just click on this to get rid of it so what we see is the northern hemisphere this is um basically real-time data so it's taken at 20 which is uh eight o'clock um local time Okay, so local time now, it's about, um, it's almost midnight. So local time, that would be British time, UTC. Um, so add, uh, so, so you'd add five hours on. Okay, so it was taken yeah, about eight, nine, ten hours ago, something like that. Okay, this data, so it's very up-to-date data. So what, we, what we're looking at is the jet streams here. So these are very fast-flowing um, air currents that are near the um, separation between the lower atmosphere, which is called the tropopause, and the stratosphere, the upper atmosphere. So the equator is warm, air, warm air expands, so the, uh, the division between the lower atmosphere and upper atmosphere is about 17 kilometers high at the at the uh, North Pole drops to about seven or eight kilometers. So because there is a temperature difference, there's a pressure difference, air moves from the equator to the pole, it curves to the right in the Northern Hemisphere because of the Coriolis force, and it sets up these jet streams that circumvent the planet. The problem is, is the Arctic sea ice is vanishing very rapidly. The snow cover in the spring is vanishing very rapidly, so the Arctic is getting a lot darker. We're in summer, it's absorbing all this extra solar radiation. We're rapidly losing the ice. Also, we get this Arctic temperature amplification, which I'll talk about. So the, the, the Arctic is warming like crazy. The equator doesn't warm so much. The temperature gradient gets reduced. So the jet streams slow down and they get wavier. So right now we can see these waves. There's a trough here. There's another trough here, another one kind of up here. There's about four or five of these. One, well, one, two, three, four, about five of these. But this is, uh, you know, the jet stream is all split and fractured and there's internal vortices and there's all kinds of stuff going on. So what I would expect as we move towards a world with no sea ice, then the, te the temperatures will greatly rise in the Arctic because they're kept close to zero on the, by the surface of the ice because the ice is melting. When there's no ice there, the seawater will rapidly rise in temperature. There'll be a lot of heat given off. We're going to get these jet stream um, ridges and troughs and, and splitting and eddies covering the entire northern hemisphere as we move to that state with no ice. And we get persistent and stuck patterns, as I discussed um, talking about the waves in violin strings or the waves in the jet streams, how we get these points of resonance with the earth, uh, different topographic features, land, ocean contrast, things like that. So what's happening right now? So this behavior is the behavior of the world that we're heading to rapidly. Now also, you really need to look at the southern hemisphere jet streams, which I'm not going to do in this particular video. But when there's a synchronization of the troughs in the northern hemisphere come so far, we've seen the, the ridges go right up into the Arctic in the winter, bringing heat there in the winter. We've seen the troughs go right down to the equator. When the southern hemisphere uh, jet streams also have troughs, which are going closer and closer to the equator, they can meet and they can exchange energy, as I showed in a video, a uh, controversial video about, about a year ago. So looking at the Arctic, um, let's look at the uh, temperatures here at the surface, or just above the surface. 
So if we look at the temperature here in the Arctic, then anything green is above zero, above zero. So we can look at the temperature here. Like look at the temperature here right now over, over Greenland. You know, it's 3.3 degrees, 4.3, you know, but what we're seeing right now is we're seeing these jet stream patterns are coming into the Arctic on both sides. So what we can see is the surface winds are then coming through the Bering Strait and they're bringing very warm temperatures. Look at the look at the temperatures of the surface um, of, of the surface. The air just uh, you know this is a two meter, a um, thousand millibar pressure level. You can also see temperatures here above zero, um, and uh, you know many regions of the Arctic are above zero, and especially over here. I mean, look at this whole region here. Very warm temperatures. Over here, all the Canadian archipelago is there. So obviously, what do you think this does to the ice? This does a real number on getting rid of, of sea ice. So play around yourself and have a look at, um, a look at this software. Now, I'm going to talk about a couple events that have been occurring um, recently as a result of these very wavy and distorted jet streams. But first of all, I want to bring your attention to this article. I just came up with this article. I just discovered that this article appeared in the Financial Post, one of the national newspapers, business oriented in Canada, and they have all kinds of climate deniers. And these kooks, you know, they write stuff like this. So Junk Science Week, wherever there's a flood, someone will be there to wrongly blame it on global warming. This is so, so this is interesting because I just discovered this and look what it says here. Um, you know, as floodwaters recede, we had, of course, massive flooding in Ontario and Quebec. Um, you know, uh, Can Canadians have been left with the impression that man-made uh, should be human caused. I mean, what, what a misogynist, right? I mean, he thinks just men have done it. What about women? Um, uh, was the cause, a few environmental scientists drew a direct link, including me, Paul Beckwith, the University of Ottawa climate scientist, well known. Okay, so get this. I'm well known for wrongly predicting in March 2013 that all ice would vanish from the Arctic by the end of that year. Okay, back at that time, the ice was exhibiting huge cracking. And I wrote a blog and I said, I think that the Arctic could lose all its sea ice this year. I think that. Um, you know, this is not a very strong prediction. It's just a comment. And uh, this is what I'm well, well, th this is sort of dug out. I mean, they go and they say, hey, this guy is saying that climate change is, is making the flooding a lot worse. Let's try to nail him. So if this is the only wrong thing that I've said, if this is the only thing, they had to go back to 2013 to find something that I said wrong. Hey, you know, I mean, whatever I say is my interpretation of, of the data, of the science, of the facts. And, you know, I don't claim to be 100% accurate. So, so this is, but anyway, this is good. He's opened it up for me to respond. This was, uh, you know, a few weeks ago. Um, but then he says, uh, you know, uh, I, so I saw the flood climate cause and effect as being very clear. And then Trudeau, blamed the floods on climate change. And Trudeau actually said that they could occur, so every 100 years, 100, one in 100 year flood could happen every 10 years or every few years. I'm surprised he didn't say every few years. I mean, I actually was quoted as saying this just the day before, not every few years, but every decade. And then Environment Minister Catherine McKenna said there's just something that is real. We're seeing the impacts of climate change. So um, I will obviously have to do a response to the National Financial Post, and I think they will be obligated with journalistic integrity to publish my response, you know, completely chopping up this guy. I've been meaning to do it for a while, and now I have a, an outlet. And, you know, look at, I mean, associating me here in one sentence with Trudeau, and then McKenna, the environment minister, you know, this, this is great. Like, this is, this is perfect. I don't care what they say about me, but they stuck me there, and I, now I have an opening to, to respond. And I think it was Mae West who said something like, it's better to be looked over than, than overlooked. Um, you know, she was a model from, from, from years ago. Okay, so, um, you know, and if you're, you know, you know, all of this stuff about climate changes, wrenching changes and stuff, it can be pretty depressing. So you have got to have your stress relief so here's one of the things I stole off my kids. It's a ninja spinner, right? And then this guy here is an ultra 
you know, ultra high quality bearings uh, spinner. Runs forever, right? You gotta have, or you can have your earth, which you crush whenever you get mad at Trump. And, uh, you know, I also have this, my little friend here. So if I make a big mistake, rather than having to refilm a whole video, which I very seldom do, try to avoid, you know, if I make a mistake, recognize it, I'll just bring this guy out and, uh, you know, re rephrase what I've said wrong. Okay, so nobody's perfect, people make mistakes. So, okay, so what's happening? There's been huge flooding in the last little while in China, in Japan, China, Bangladesh, and India. And these are displacing huge numbers of people. Like, like in Japan, huge, huge numbers, like half a million people, you know, maybe up to a mil more than half a million. Okay, huge flooding in the south of Japan. So notice Kyushu, the southernmost island, and I'll show the jet streams during what they did during that flooding and why that flooding occurred. Okay, maybe the, maybe the post will say, oh, you know, this has got nothing to do with the jet stream. Okay, China, massive flooding. 300,000 people evacuated, you know, a large part. There's 900,000 in Bangladesh, right? Um, and there's also people in India, you know, massive flooding. 400, almost 400,000 people affected over 863 villages. You know, there's, there's ma and this is all in one article, you know, from uh, just uh, yesterday, I believe, July 7th, okay? Um, Focusing on the Japan stuff. Look at this in Japan. Okay, two and a half months of rain in nine hours forced 400,000 from their homes. These rains have never been experienced in Japan before. Um, they say here the southwestern island of Kyushu was hit by 774 millimeters of rain in nine hours. That's 2.2 times the amount of rain that falls in a normal July. So the whole month of July, they get quite a bit of rain. 350 millimeters, but they had 774 in nine hours. This doesn't set a global world record. I think the global world record is over like a meter in some tropical place. Um, but this is, I mean, all of this rain, like it's catastrophic. To give you an idea, you know, all the flooding in Ottawa, um, that was based on 150 millimeters in April and 120 millimeters in the first week of May, 270 in total. You know, nothing compared to this, of course, but still it caused huge damage. So it's what places get relative to what they would normally get. Okay, I mean, there's just some images here of the devastation in Japan. I mean, just, uh, you know, cra crazy stuff. Is it going to advance for me? You're supposed to click on this and it's supposed to change. But anyway, if you go to the telegraph, okay, on um, look at Google the Telegraph with this flood, you can see all kinds of images of this of this horrendous uh, devastation. Okay, so what's going on? Why did that hit Japan? Okay, this is um, Earth Null School. I'm looking at TCW. The names are all up here. This is total cloud water. This is total precipitable water. Okay. Um, and if you just click the, the, the mark here, it's 56 kilograms per square meter. That's the surface area. That's the amount of water per surface area. If all the water comes out, that'll be how much rain there is in that particular area. But the TCW, the total cloud water, look at it here, okay? Um, over here, it's, it's 0.564 to give you an idea over here. It's, very, very small. Over here, it's very small. It's high here. You know, there's a hot spot here, right? This is where the flooding occurred. When you do the time difference, this is where the time is. And you can actually, you know, scroll through, advance three hours, and you can see it shift a little bit, advance three more hours, you know, and it's starting to leave. So when you think about it, you know, just this one little hot spot area um, on in the planet happens to be hitting a particular region where there's lots of people and cause catastrophic flooding never seen before. You know, when you think about it, this type of thing can happen anywhere. And this is what the jet streams were doing. You know, they were just clipping down this lower area. So um, that's good for now. I'll continue um, in another video. Thanks.